so I already made bromobenzene and chlorobenzene in my previous videos. I guess that if I want a full collection of phenyl halides on my channel, the next logical step is to make either fluorobenzene or iodobenzene. And since fluorine is a bit tedious, I decided to first show you how to make iodobenzene. This time I will not start directly from benzene. While it can be done, an easier and definitely safer method is to use aniline. I will firstly convert the amino group to diazonium salt, which I will then displace with iodide. So let's get started. For this reaction I'm gonna need a lot of ice. And when I say a lot of ice, I mean kilograms. The next step was to equip my 3 neck 1 liter round bottom flask for the reaction. I covered the ice with water to ensure better contact and submerged the flask into the ice bath. Then I measured 180 ml of distilled water and added them to the flask. A big stir bar was added to mix the contents properly. I measured 37.5 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid and also added it to the flask. Now it's time to add the main reagent, which is 37.5 ml of aniline. The moment it was added, it instantly turned into the sulfate salt, which precipitated out of the solution. To dilute the solution, I added 275 more milliliters of distilled water. While waiting for the solution to cool, I measured out 27.5 grams of sodium nitride, which I then dissolved in 115 milliliters of distilled water. The flask was equipped with an addition funnel, which I filled with the sodium nitride solution. I added some sodium chloride in the ice bath to chill it even further. This will help to keep the solution's temperature low during the addition. When the temperature was below 5 degrees Celsius, I rotated the stopcock and started adding the sodium nitride. What is happening is that the nitride converts the aniline to diazonium salt. These salts are highly unstable at high temperatures and easily decompose. That's why during the whole addition the temperature should never exceed 5 degrees Celsius. During the addition I prepared the last solution needed. This is potassium iodide. I measured 67.5 grams of it in a beaker. Then I dissolved it by adding 100 ml of distilled water. A key point when doing diazotation reaction is to know when you've added enough nitride. One way to test this is to use a paper which is soaked in potassium iodide and starch solution. If there is any excess nitride in the solution, the paper should turn blue. I had never done this test before and I somehow managed to screw it up. The thing I did was to forgot to add the iodide. And well, I tested it and it wasn't blue, so I added more of the nitride. Then I tested it again and guess what? It wasn't blue, so I added even more of the nitride. For a moment I even thought that my stoichiometry was wrong and made even more of the sodium nitride solution and started adding it. 
However, the paper never became blue. At that point, I realized that I added way more nitride solution that I needed, so I said, screw this. It is probably some kind of shitty analytical test that never works. The next thing that I had to do was to add the potassium iodide. I charged it in the addition funnel and rotated the stopcock. The moment the first drop went into the solution, I realized that I certainly had shitted myself because all the solution got covered up with the precipitated iodine. Some nitrogen dioxide also started to evolve, just to make it a little bit more disastrous. At that point, I had only one choice. To continue adding iodide, hoping that at some point it will react with all the excess nitride and then if there is still some diazonium salt left, it will convert it to iodobenzene. So the next few minutes were pretty intense, especially when the solution started to foam up. Nevertheless, I didn't doubt even for a minute in my decisions and acted like a real professional chemist. I began to pray for the reaction to work. Since some of the iodide got oxidized, I thought, well, I added excess nitride, so why I also don't add some excess iodide? I made more of the potassium iodide solution and charged it in the addition funnel. In the end, my professionalism got rewarded, so it didn't foam over. And now I had this solution which looked like liquid shit. I had to heat the flask so that all the diazonium salt was consumed. This initially scared me a bit because I expected copious amount of nitrogen to be produced and foam over, but my prayer from before was still working. In the beginning, some iodine vapor started to occur. Then the whole solution turned black. And before you write a comment about me hitting the flask so foolishly, don't worry, I will pay for that later. Just keep watching. When the temperature reached 40 degrees, I opened the flask and measured the pH. As you can see, it was acidic. Not all the diazonium salt would have been able to react with the iodide, even if it was in excess. Some of it reacted with water, forming phenol. Phenol is a weak acid, so in basic pH it would be a non-volatile salt. We want it to be non-volatile, so I started adding sodium hydroxide solution until it became basic. The most effective way to get the iodobenzene out of this mixture is to steam distill it. Iodobenzene is very volatile with steam and can be distilled very quickly that way. And since it doesn't mix with water, I decided to cheat a bit by using a Clevenger apparatus. Remember how I said that I would pay for heating the flask directly on my hot plate? Well, look at the robot. It's bubbling like someone had put fries in it. It turned out that this direct way of heating had cracked the flask bottom and now it's leaking into the robot. I hope that this will serve you a good lesson what not to do in the laboratory because especially when working with this kind of volumes, things could go much worse. Anyway, I transferred everything into another 1 liter flask and continued the distillation. 
you can see how the iodo benzene separates out in the Clevenger adapter from where I can drain it at any time. Also, this apparatus returns the upper water layer back to the solution, so I don't worry that the flask will run dry. The distillation was continued until no more oily drops came off. I didn't really like the color of my product, so I decided to wash it, assuming that this color comes from the iodine impurities. So I prepared some dilute sodium thiosulfate solution and added it alongside the iodobenzene in the addition funnel. I kept shaked and vented the funnel, but this did nothing to the cover. So I decided to proceed with the next step. I transferred the iodobenzene into an Erlenmeyer flask and added some anhydrous sodium sulfate to dry it. After standing for a while, the salt was filtered using some filter paper. A simple distillation was arranged and the flask was wrapped up in aluminum foil to reduce heat loss. Soon a colorless liquid started to come over, which unfortunately soon became yellow. This is probably due to some iodobenzene decomposing from heat. Nevertheless, all of it came over between 185 and 190 degrees Celsius, so it should be sufficiently pure. My final yield was 61.5 grams of iodobenzene which corresponds to 74.8%. So that was all about this interesting synthesis. If you enjoyed watching it, you can help me grow my channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons or by sharing the video. Also, if you want to support me, you can go to my Patreon page, link for which you will find in the description. Thank you for watching.